Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a Kaladesh Remastered Draft here on the channel. Before I dive in, I do want to remind you that if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment in the comment section down below with any questions or feedback. You can click that bell so you get notified when I post future videos, and check out the Twitch stream live at twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. I'm not the last one to hit ready for once. That's what you gotta love about someone in the queue, biting the bullet, taking one for the team. Ooh, calculus homework. Exciting stuff. Okie doke. Ooh, they hit ready. Perfect. Okie doke. Well, we have opened one of the funnier cards in the set. It refers to uh, Nicole Bolas. It's like a mini cruel ultimatum. It's kind of funny because this card doesn't do anything in limited because it's three colors and there's no Bolas Planeswalker in this set. It was actually pretty cool because it like implied that Bolas was coming and then Nicole Bolas Godfarer came out in Amonkhet. Uh, I mean, actually, in Hour of Devastation. I'm pretty sure it was in Hour of Devastation and not M Cat. Each opponent sacks a creature and then discards a card, and you return one from your grave to your hand and then draw a card. Um, Is that even worth doing still? Sack a creature, they're going to sack a servo, discard a card. I return a creature, so it's like a four for one. It's kind of cute. What else is in this pack? Revolution Restoration Gearsmith is pretty good. Hmm. Maybe we just try to live the dream. It is kind of a sweet card. I think Restoration Gearsmith is likely better, though. We're going to try it. Did you start? Yeah. I found a 1950 old bedroom in the best neighborhood. I, I used to live in this neighborhood. One bedroom. You guys, you and Jack, maybe share. Ooh, neat. Oh, I'm excited about it. Yeah. And then we would split it three ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it could be fun. Would you do, be up for that? Yeah, maybe. I am. I have to look at it and stuff. But. Okay, so we're taking this card, and then we get a land that's on color for it, so that seems kind of neat. Go for the Gearsmith. We're going to just try out this card. It seems neat. It's like a four for one if it works, which is kind of cool. Pacification Array can do good things, but we're just going to take the land because it helps us cast our intimations. Ooh, and now Baral. Make this thing cost one less. It feels like we're just rare drafting and all of our rares happen to work towards the same exact plan. There's also decent ways of fixing. We'll just be prioritizing prophetic prisms, things like that. Well, this could be cool. Cast it for four mana. I don't know. I feel like we're drafting on easy mode. We're just drafting the cool cards out of each pack and going to see if they can work together. Ether Theorist is also really good. Uh, you can scry to help find your dark intimations. Um... I would like to play blue-red. I think blue-red's quite good. Green has a lot of fixing, but I don't want to play green if I'm going to be playing a Grixis card. Vengeful Rebel's a little bit worse than it looks, just because it's harder to enable. It does do well in, like, black-green sometimes, or white-black. Um, but I think I go Brawl, followed by maybe Ether Theorist. Maybe the Vengeful Rebel, but I think Ether Theorist is real nice. And Brawl's sweet. Wow, we're just legitimately taking, like, the card in the upper left out of every single pack. It's like, what the heck? Because this is just a good blue card. And it looks like blue is kind of the color that we're most likely to draft with a Brawl and a Spire Bluff and a Dark Intimations. And this rewards us for having a lot of artifacts, which blue decks generally want anyway. And you get a nice 4-3 flyer. What else is there in this pack? There's Tezzeret's Ambition, which I can probably get later. Inventor's Goggles is good with, like, Sweatworks Brawler. That's a good synergy card. Um, Pricotta Pillar Bug can be okay sometimes. But, I mean, we're just going to keep taking these upper left cards because it's pretty pretty cool. Ooh, Prophetic Prism, just what the Doctor ordered. We're not going to take this card. We're more likely to be blue-red than um, black-blue, though we could definitely be black-blue because all we have, like, this land can help us splash red. Uh, and this is, can be either blue, black, or blue, red for us if we were base colors. But Prophetic Prism is perfect for us. It's an artifact that works with Windkin Raiders for Improvise. It fixes for our Dark Intimations, and there's a lot of artifact synergy cards. Prism is too perfect. And Brawl Bruiser is one that I'm not a huge fan of, because coming into play tapped means it doesn't block as well. It doesn't crew vehicles as well. Um, giving it Menace is nice, but that's not like a huge payoff. But Prism is the exact card that I wanted. Oh, we'll chase Dragster's not really perfect for me here. Renegade map might be okay, but Prism is the premier fixing here. Oh! Wow! Contraband Kingpin! You don't say. 
So having a counter is a little bit harder than it might look, especially in this color combo, but Contraband Kingpin can do some serious work. I mean, if I play blue-black artifacts, splash red for dark intimations and maybe a welding sparks or something. I mean, it's between this and then other than that, I maybe take the mall fist squad just to make two bodies for one. Hello, Puff Mud. But pretty cool. I like where we're at. I haven't, I mean, blue black control with a dark intimations as a top end to get like a four for one. Could be good. Ooh. So now we're just going to take trophy mage. I think this is, would be a fine card to splash potentially or, or bring it out of the board. Um, this is also a fine one as an artifact. That's also like, sometimes I'll be able to activate it, but trophy mage is really good. Cause there are artifact creatures like weld fast monitor. Um, and I might get a Percata pillar bug, which I'd be pretty down to play. So trophy mage is just a nice little value creature. Yeah. The majority of picks have been top left. Fen hauler is another good payoff for a black blue deck of this nature. We've seen a few Propeller Pioneers, some Hunt the Weeks and stuff, but Fen Hall is way better than it looks because not being able to be blocked by Servos and Thopters is really big. Yeah, we'll be able to find a tutor target for it, I'm pretty sure. I mean, we've seen multiple Percata Pillar Bugs. Uh, we could even get lucky and get like a Fabrication Module or something. But yeah, Inventor's Goggle is not really looking as good in my deck, but Fen Hauler is going to be good. Wow. Earsmith came back. Look at that. We could splash white too. <laughs> We've taken the top left card so many times. One, two, three, four, like five times. I'm going to take it over the Foundry Screecher. I'm not really interested in a 3 1 flyer. I think we could totally, if we end up with enough prisms, we could just splash white as well. Have a sweet deck. Defiant Salvager. I don't really want the lookout. Consulate Skygate. Eh. We'll have to see how ambitious it is after we see how many prisms we end up with. Any maps and things, but... Yeah. We'll have to see. It's definitely worth taking there. If I get a couple more white cards, maybe I splash those instead of the intimations. Eh, Defiant Salvage is actually probably better than it looks. And now... <laughs> five color. Splash green for fixing. That's never gone wrong. Solvent. Hmm. I'll take the Foundry's Creature now. Perfect. Tezzeret's Ambition, the perfect card draw spell for my deck. I was hoping this would wheel. Wow, Implement of Malice came back. Nice. That could be okay. Yay! Yeah, who who told who, the Pacata Pillar Bug last pick to go with the Trophy Mage is so perfect. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite cards in the entire set. I just love the design on this card. Absolutely sick. Oh my gosh, but there's a Cloud Blazer to splash perfect with the perfect white splash. <laughs> I don't think we're splashing white for Cloud Blazer, but I think we'll take this card. We could get some energy stuff still. There's not a ton of energy in black. Cloud Blazer's great. Um, there's a Whirler Maker. There's a Die Young. What else is in this pack? I just like this card a lot. Hmm. There's a Ether Chaser, but we're not. We're playing blue black here. Cloud Blazer, Splashing White for it. It's a little bit tough. Thopterist? Whirler Maker, you're saying? I'm not taking Whirler Maker here. It is Dark Confidant Light. And I just it's just also a really fun card, so I'm going to take that. Glint Nest Crane. Sign me up. We have Artifact, Artifact, Artifact. Eh. Two mana, one three that can sometimes draw you a card is nice. Fen Hall is okay. Mm hmm. What else is in this pack? Fen Hauler number two, but I don't really need Fen Hauler. I'm just gonna take the Glintless Crane. We're looking for Prophetic Prism. That would be our best card. Sign me up. Whirler Virtuoso is also really good, but I just need as many Prisms as I can get. I wouldn't mind a World of Virtuoso, but I don't really have energy pay energy generation in this deck. I don't have like a bunch of the ether creatures, and Prophetic Prism is perfect for my like two improvised creatures, my splashing if I end up splashing a couple cards. So yeah. Virtuoso is good in the green decks, but non-green decks sometimes struggle to generate the energy. 
Chrism is an all-star, I agree. Okay, we'll take a glimmer of genius. Don't mind if I do. That's just such a good card draw spell. I even have this guy to spend the energy a little bit. Don't have a ton of other energy stuff, but I can probably get an Aether Swoop or something. Also just a great control card. I wouldn't mind a Weld Fast Monitor just to have a second 3-mana artifact to go get. <laughs> Era of Innovation card that I think is just a little too clunky. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Weapon Craft Enthusiast. I like this because it gives me three artifact, I mean two artifacts and three bodies for one card, which just helps me ramp out these guys. It gives me multiple artifacts for the Salvager if I want to go that direction. I would like Aether Swooper, that would be good. But I think we're going to take this over the Malfist squad, just three defensive bodies that power up all my other artifact stuff. This is disrespectful. Fabrication module is a house. It's perfect in my deck too, because I have the trophy mage to go get Piddler Bug or Module. I wouldn't mind Ether Meltdown at all. Ether Meltdown is also a good card for this deck. It's just a defensive tool. But Fabrication Module just wins you the game so many times. I also wouldn't mind a Thriving Turtle or an Ether Meltdown. Hmm. Well this works out really nicely. This card's going to be good in my deck. I think it's going to be better than Fen Hauler, just because I'll be casting it for like four mana a lot of the time, I think. Works really well with Weapon Craft Enthusiast. We'll be able to get a little bit of incidental energy from random things. We have Siphoner that pays us off for energy. We have Module. Module's mostly just good because it like gives you like extra counters and stuff. And there's like enough random energy running around that's going to be good. I'll take Subtle Strike. I don't mind playing one of those. And now Die Young. Another nice removal spell. We're just going to take the Uncommon here. Wow. Late white card. We're not going to play Rush of Vitality, so I'm just going to take this card for no reason. I don't, eh, Maybe I won't Rush of Vitality. There's uh, some odds that I play it, but I'm not going to play a Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Sure, we'll take... Eh, maybe we want Select for Inspection against certain matchups. Now that we have a per, uh, Monitor... Ooh, that's a good pickup. Malphus Squad. Fine 4-drop here. Module is just a good card. I have a couple of Energy Generations, but mostly it's just like a late-game engine. The Monitor did come back, but now that I have Module, I don't need it as much. Maybe Module's not as good in this deck, but it's still probably great. Okay, so what do I want here? So first up, there's a Merchant's Dock Hand. So it's four mana tap, untapped artifacts to put an artifact in my hand. I don't like this card because a one-two is just not really a body on its own. There's a Cloud Blazer, there's a Whir Whirler Virtuoso, and I'm already splashing that color. Hmm. Cloud Blazer, there's an Aether Swooper, there's another Die Young. Die Young might wheel, which would be good for me. I kind of want to just take the Whirler Virtuoso. But I guess it's not a great splash. So I kind of think Swooper would be good. Swooper's probably better than Die Young. And I don't think I'm splashing white at the moment. So I'm just going to take the Swooper over the Virtuoso. Swooper's just a good addition to the deck. And now Poisoner. Well, the Virtuoso is not as good in my deck. Because it's not like I'm a green deck that just has a like random attune with Ethers. I'm not going to be able to just, like, I'm sure it's a good card, but I, like, if I'm splashing it too, it just puts extra strain on my mana base when I don't need to, especially because I have, like, blue-black cards and stuff. Ether Poisoner, I think, is better than Thriving Turtle because a 1-1 one -one Death Touch is pretty good, and I don't really need the one drop specifically. I wouldn't mind a Whirler Maker either. I like the Poisoner. And now a Daring Demolition just for some removal. Just what the Doctor ordered. Hello, Oko. Ether Theorist is also good, but this pack has been all hits so far, and I jinxed myself slightly, because this pack is kind of a whiff. I don't love the Dragster. I think I'm just going to take Malfist Squad. It's two bodies. Helps me with my improvised stuff.
Ooh, this could be a really good underhanded designs deck. Ether Theorist is also great. But I really want to try this card, I think. I think it's going to be sweet. Like when I have an artifact enter, I get to drain them. Theorist is also really good, but I, I want to try this card. Okay, and now there's another Fen Hauler for the top end. I do like Fen Hauler. Probably better than Pillar Bug. Pillar, one of the Pillar Bugs might wheel, because we did wheel another one. Wow, this card's sick. Ether Poisoner. So yeah, we did end up getting some energy stuff to go with this Fabrication module. Yeah, and I'm glad we don't really need the Ether Theorist, because we have a lot of stuff to do in the late game with our mana. Okay, there's another Tezzeret's Ambition. There's a Cogworkers Puzzle Knot. If I really just needed two artifacts, but I don't think I need that. I'm just going to take the extra card draw. Maybe I'll side it in, or just main deck it. But I have 31 cards here, so I'm probably not main decking two of that. I can probably cut Implement of Malice. I have four artifacts right now for my Glint Nest Crane to potentially hit. Eh, it's a little low. Barol makes Die Young cheaper, Settle Strike cheaper, second Die Young cheaper. Wow, two Die Youngs. That's pretty nice. I don't really want the Salvager. Hmm. Any number of plus and plus encounters. I don't really have plus and plus encounters, is the thing. 4 man 2 2 lifelink's probably better than this guy, though. I don't think I'm going to want to play this guy. It's probably better than the other one, though. Okay. Night market lookout. Interesting. Okay, let's see what we want to do here. So, this is 14, 15, 16, 17. So 17 lands definitely where we want to be here because we have some expensive cards. This will help us draw extra lands early in the game by just cantripping. Don't really want the Founder's Creature. Don't really want the Salvager. Trophy Mage is good. Weapon Craft Enthusiast is good. Probably don't need two of these, especially because I already have Glimmer of Genius. And then it's just up to what my final cuts are. So we have hmm, four more cuts to make. 16 creatures, 11 non-creatures. So we have a good number of creatures. Do I want to cut my worst two drop, which is Glint Nest Crane? I'm pretty confident Glint Nest Crane is my worst creature. I think Baral does some good stuff, making my card draw and my daring demolitions and all my stuff cost a little bit less. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So if I just only played, I would have one, two, three sources of red mana for my this card. So I'm probably fine with that. Um, I don't need to splash white. I don't really want these cards. I don't want the implement. Hmm. I have a lot of like pure card advantage and slower cards, but I think I'm okay. Yeah, I could see cutting the Tetzerites, but I don't want to run out of things to do. It's a thing. I could see cutting a Fen Hauler. And I could see cutting underhanded designs because I don't have that many artifact generations, but I kind of want that as a removal spell as well. I'm going to cut Glint Nest Crane because I have one, two, three, four hits. I have a lot of artifact stuff, but I only have four hits off of it. Um, which means that if I look at the top four cards in my deck, that's like, then you multiply, that's 10% of your deck. So then you do 10% times however many cards you have. So I have like 50% chance of drawing a card. Um, so these three top end cards, we have three card advantage cards with two mall fists. Maybe Baral isn't good enough. I feel like Baral's pretty good for me. I mean, he makes my stuff cost less, which is nice. I turn two Baral, turn three Glimmer of Genius. 
have two more cuts to make. We have we do want to play 17 lands because we don't want to run out of mana because we have a lot of card draw and stuff. We need both pillar bugs. We need the trophy mage. So what are the cards that could be cut? We could theoretically cut Baral. I think I want both Die Youngs, which probably means I don't want Subtle Strike because I'm not really an attacking deck and uh, Die Young can take out the small creatures. Okay, so this is 17 here. We have one, two, three, four, five, two drops, which is about right. And a lot of cheap removal. I think Underhanded Designs is an interesting one. It's like a four mana removal spell in many cases. Hmm. Yeah, seems like a fun deck and I'll see you folks. Let's just make sure our colors are okay. Yeah, eight, seven, but there's actually eight, eight and then two red sources plus these two. So we have four red sources. So yeah, I think that's going to be fine and we have good sideboard options. If we play more aggressive po foes, if we need more win cons, we can bring in another Fen Hauler. But yeah, overall pretty excited. I think Malfus squad's probably better than Baral just because making an artifact is good. And I'll see you folks in the matches. Before I get to the matches, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, and special shout out to those who support me at the credits level, Eric S., Stephen W., Arpeggio, Green Rogue, and Cindy W. I really do appreciate your support and the support of all my patrons. If you want to learn more about how to support me and my content via Patreon, you can find that information at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. It's a great way to help me continue making videos and also gives you access to some nice little perks along the way. Without further ado though, let's get to the matches. Welcome to round one. We are on the draw. Yeah, we have some early interaction, a creature that we can technically cast. I'm inclined to keep it. Our deck uses its mana pretty well. Everyone wants me to mull it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to mull this hand. <laughs> This hand is okay. It's got an early play. It's got a medium play. Yeah, but I mean, my deck is a deck that uses lands fairly effectively as well, so. That was pretty incredible as a draw. But I have prof prophetic prisms to make the like land distribution also like not matter as much. I'm keeping my four energy so I can kill something big because they haven't played any early drops. We will certainly kill this. My case exactly. Jesus. Our deck is drawing a lot of swamps. One thing they could have done is they could have crewed in response and put a counter on it, which is kind of cute. Wow. Coming at me. punished for making this servo. Actually, the servo let us cast the Wind Raiders. We've just only drawn swamps this game. I mean, we've drawn a couple of spells. I mean, obviously, Ether Super was a fantastic draw as well. I'm feeling like we're in good shape this game, though. They're coming. 
coming at me. No walk. I'll trade four for dam five damage for two damage. I am glad I didn't block. That's a sweet draw. I'm glad I had that after the Hornet. This plus die young for a 2-3 flyer, is that worth it? Probably. Would I like to spread it out and make three one ones? Hmm. Yes. Where is mini ultimatum? Oh, that would be such a good draw. Actually, I need some one of my creatures to die first, but after that it would be good. Oh, thank God. I mean, thank goodness. I would love a scry here, opponent. No thank you on the land. Haha, -ha, I got value and you didn't, opponent. Get wrecked. I scryed to the bottom. And now I have a new card to kill, if I want to. And I'm going to chump the Kujar with my 0-1. Because the 0-1 ain't doing much. And if I do draw my Tesseret's thing, I'll want it. Oh, Glimmer of Genius would be a sweet draw. Or Tesseret's Ambition. Or Fen Hauler. Or Glint Sleeve Siphoner so that I could kill the Foundry Hornet. Oh, yes. Because then I get an energy. Wowza. That is crazy. Oh, nice. So they're going to play this and put the counter on this. So then they'll have a 3 3 flyer. And I can make this. Hmm. Definitely don't want to trade with this thing. Do I want to trade kill their eager construct with my die young? Probably not. Keep playing my lands because if I do draw a glimmer, I will want all the lands in play, but I'll keep yeah. Keep my folks back. And then Gear Seeker Serpent kills them in two turns. And they're certainly going to want to make this thing a 3-3. Three, three. Making that servo with the Aether Swooper was like predicated on me not dying, drawing specifically Die Young, because obviously I'd rather have the 2 energy right now than the 1-1 one, one that got killed by a Foundry Hornet. Though they wouldn't have played the Foundry Hornet without value probably, so I would have lost a lot more. But... Okay. So if they do have Subtle Strike, so what could they have? They could have Blossoming Defense. This plays around that. They could have Subtle Strike. It plays around that. They could have plus three, plus three, which completely decimates me, um, which seems less likely. Plus one, plus three. Don't play around that either. Um, so Oh, gosh. I 
I hope they don't have infusion. Oh, they have another Foundry Hornet. Oh, well, I'm glad I blocked because that's okay for me. Not great against this Aetherborn Marauder. And the reason that I blocked their vehicle was because if they had Subtle Strike, I didn't want them to get a counter on this, but I guess it wouldn't have worked out for me. Oh, perfecto. Thank you, Ether Poisoner. Just in time. They're gonna jump. I will assume that they jump, yep. <laughs> they attack with construct. I think I block with the poisoner. It's just the safest. They could have a big creature, in which case I get punished. Yeah, sure. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked with the swooper. I hope they don't have a way to kill Gear Seeker. Looks like we got there. Even if they give it minus one, minus one with the subtle strike, I still kill them. Seven, eight, nine, ten lands. Yeah, we drew ten lands and barely got there. Okay. So they had some flyers. I definitely don't want X ones in my deck if I can avoid it. Malfist squad might be coming out because of that. Because that thing just decimates Malfist. Okay, obviously I have to keep some of my creatures in. But that card is scary. Okay, I'm going to cut one Malfist squad, maybe for a Fenhaller or a Tezzeret's Ambition. Hmm. Huh. Bum, 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 Subtle Strike also looks good against... What do they have that it does good against? They didn't see show me any X ones, did they? They don't have any X ones to speak of. Brawl could be okay. Could be. I don't really want Malthus Squad. I'm gonna cut at least one of those. Presumably for a Fen Hauler. And I'll cut another Malthus Squad for a Glintness Crane to help me against their flyers. Because they do have Sky Skiffs and stuff. So we're cutting two four drops for one expensive card and one cheaper card. I kind of want the Tezzer's Ambition, but I already have three massive card draw spells in my deck. And they're not like a completely controlling deck. They kind of have some beatdown stuff elements. So that's like for if I play a control mirror. I think Crane is a good addition. Crane! Crane! The Crane! Caw! Caw! 
Hmm. Yeah, that wasp is going to be a problem. Maybe I'm supposed to... I just I just need the energy generation from the poisoners, I think, to make my die youngs good. And things of that nature. And then I'll just make up for the card advantage they get from the hornet in other ways. You don't want to fundamentally change your game plan too much. I mean, sometimes you can, but not in this case, I don't think. Okay, we're going to keep this hand. Okay, it's a little bit risky, I will say. But underhanded designs into Weaponcraft Enthusiast immediately turns on underhanded designs, and then Fen Hauler is going to come out soon because I'll have two artifacts in play, so that'll make this cost like five. An underhanded design seems pretty good in my deck. Okay, I'm glad I brought in some more expensive threats so that they can, can't tap down everything. Yeah, Cardboard Live had an update that I installed today. Beautiful. Not the ideal land. Um, mountain kind of awkward here, but that's the cost of having a powerful 4 for 1 in your deck. Ugh. I will certainly keep an island. Don't mind if I do. Hmm. Do I just want a 2-3? Probably. Because then I can block the eager construct. I was thinking I was going to make a bunch of 1-1s, one -ones, but then they just... This, like... Yeah, and if they use Pacification Array, I'm pretty happy. Sure, my Fen Haulers are a little bit farther away, but... I'm going to be relying on Aether Swoopers and stuff, hopefully. And this... They don't have the mana to really be doing this, so... This is good for me. Okay, I don't really want to just do this, so I'm just going to hold my guy back. And play Glimmer. And if they're spending their turns using Pacification Array to get through two damage, I'm going to be okay. Because I'm getting a lot of stuff here if they spend their turn here again doing that. Because they would have been able to deploy another threat if I hadn't done that. Cause I w Especially because if I wanted to play Fan Hall, it wouldn't have worked anyway. Okay. Sure. Sure, so they get to attack with their 3-3 three, three now. Oh, they're putting it on that. Okay. Interesting. Don't need lands now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Whew, this is going to go well. I probably should play Baral. It's just really nice to have a 1-3 that makes your stuff ch cost less. Sure. I'll take 5. I could have traded with this. Uh, I will take action. I know it's greedy, but... Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Okay, now I will trade these. I probably should have traded these last turn. Because I already have a Fen Hall as his top end. But getting an extra card is nice. Sure. Eh, 
And I'm gonna gain some life back from this. Do they have Fatal Push to take down this guy? That would be bad. Oh, that's really good for me. I can use this underhanded enchantment. It's perfect. Oh, okay, this is gorgeous. Trophy Mage. That's good because I can get my Pillar Bug next turn. So I probably want to go Ether Poisoner, attack with Swooper, get another token. And... And also attack with my Siphoner because I want the extra energy and they I get to trade it with one of their things. Even a 1-2 is a fine thing to trade with. I don't want to attack with that because I'm still low. I guess I could have used this to kill something, but I don't think I need to. I have two good blockers now. Perfect. Oh, I get to kill a 2-2. That's good. And now I can make another 1-1 one -one next turn. I have three artifacts. Pillar bug, okay. They did get horribly mana screwed this game. I'm still gonna get the module. I don't I think my life total is safe enough that I don't need to worry about it anymore. Okay, so I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna have a ninth one. So I can afford to play this. And then this is seven, so it'll be seven minus one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the extra artifacts. So yeah, I just can't pay the mana for it. And then I can make energy and start making guys. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, improvise is really sweet for sure. And now I just have this tool every turn. Okay, so I can attack with. So this thing can't block, but they could single block it with that, which is a problem. Uh, or I could just kill that. That seems good to me. Because now they can't block Fell Haulers properly. And then I have Fabrication Module to activate next turn. I'll do it on this turn so I can like avoid like uh, the minus one, minus one guy if they go for that. I do lose a lot of servos. But I can block their 3-4 still. Oh, die young, perfect. Um, what do I want to take out? One of their non-artifact creatures, so they're three, four, probably. Put it on my flyer. So they can, they have five power only, so they can't kill my stuff. This is, they can block, they chump one of these, then they take five, eight, block, block, and they die. So they have to chump both of them, and they take three, five, six, so, yeah. 
So let's just see what's their best blocks if they have to live. So they block there, there, and they block there, and they take two, five, seven, and then they have a Percata Pillar Bug alive against my massive board. Um, what else could they do? If I don't attack with this, then they go, then they don't have to jump both of these. If they don't jump both of these, they're dead, right? They go jump one, block there, block there, and they take nine, they take 10, yeah. I guess that they could technically have go bl jump there, block there, block there, take five, ten, yeah, that's ten. So they have to block both of them. Block, block, eat, take seven. At least I think that's the math. Did I do the math wrong? Maybe. It does put me dead to like double plus three plus three. But if I just hold back the trophy mage anyway, do they have double plus three plus three? Man, that would be such a sick win for them. I guess it was really unnecessary for me to attack all like that. It'd be pretty dumb if I lost because of that. That'd be real bad. It probably wasn't a good attack all. I should have just attacked with the fen haulers and the super. I just didn't think they had that card in their deck. Still probably completely unnecessary. <laughs> Whew, I'll see you folks in the next round. Boom, to round two, we have another good hand. Though, the hands we have been keeping have been a very dicey. At least that first hand was. Oh, no. The ether has been attuned. This could be a bummer. Oh, gr green-white. Hmm. I hope they don't have long tusk cup. Since we don't really care, I'm going to play the Aether Poisoner. <laughs> Certainly not blocking. I'm going to make either a server from this or a server from this to block this. It's all about lining up your threat, your answers with their threats a lot of the time. Like, this is just not a good trade for me, because this can trade with anything. Okay, all of a sudden, it's looking a lot better to trade with this. How does one ban? Is ban on this list? No, it's not. There we go. Um... And now we are going to trade with a servo. I mean, thought uh, one of those things because we don't want to take four a turn. So trading with this is going to happen. Then we can trade there if we need to, or trade there. So we essentially trade our card for one of their cards. That worked out. Maybe they have a revolt card, like a renegade rallyer. Yep. I was about to say that looks real bad otherwise. Definitely gonna make a 1 1. Thing about Menace is this is gonna trade for two of their creatures no matter what. And now we can cast this thing next turn. If they have Inspired Trip. Wow. Do they have a second Renegade Rallyer? No, they do not. Hmm. Next time we're going to get our Fen Hauler down. I 
I just want to get their combat trick out of their hand. They had unbridled growth, so they could have done that anyway. So now we can double block the Lifecraft Cavalry. And block and pray. And looks like our prayers have been answered. Hallelujah. Do we attack? Do we have to double block this? Hopefully not. I feel like we lose if we double block that. Like with these two creatures specifically. I'm gonna block here. Hey, Huck. It's going all right. We are about to lose this game if we don't draw something good. Ah, oh, yikes. That was an ouch. Big ouch. Would our Bolas' thing get us out of it? Eh, that certainly doesn't. Ugh. So, one threes seem good. This thing seems good as always. Hmm. Fen Hauler seems big. Subtle Strike seems good. Rush of Vitality also seems pretty good against Green White, where they don't have bounce or instant speed removal really. Fen Holler could be okay. What looks bad? Okay, Ether Poisoner seems good against their big stuff, not as good against their small stuff, but that's just how the card works. In general, okay, I like our two drop stuff. Probably don't need the crane. Probably Brawl. Eh, Malfa Squad. What are we thinking? Hmm. Probably don't want the Windkin Raiders. I'd rather have Fen Hauler. Weapon craft seems all right. Hmm. Crane does do well against their two one, kind of, and against their one ones, but I probably don't need it. Brawl is nice because it's good with the rushes of vitality and the subtle strikes that I'm bringing in. Malphus squad might be a bit expensive. I probably don't need two of these. Hmm. Hmm. So I have to make some quick cuts here. Okay, 20 seconds here. Maybe that's a bit aggressive, but I... Oh, that was a tough sideboarding session. Subtle Strike seems like it could do good work, though. But it might be worse than Rush of Vitality. But maybe I only want one Rush of Vitality. Okay, this is a good hand. Uh, we'll have to see how it performs. Oh my gosh, what a rip. This card is a beast. It's also so good with Rush of Vitality. Wow, that was a good draw. Okay, we'll have more time to think about sideboarding for game three, luckily. You're kidding me. 
I can't believe it. I literally have protection from a lot of removal spells, just not that one. Oh well. We will glimmer. Wow, that might be their only answer in their entire deck. Huh. Oh well, we have a lot of card draw in our hand. Ooh, those are both good, but I do need lands. But maybe not as much, so maybe I'll just take both of them. And then hope to draw a land next turn. Hmm, kidoke. Seems good to me. I'm just gonna do that. Seems worth it. That card is big and it's gonna give all their big stuff haste. And I can use Die Young now to kill this 4-4. Four -four. Next turn I can play Fen Hauler. I could also just play it later, but so I have six mana. Kind of want to play it when I have. Yeah, I'll just get it out now. <sighs> I'm not going to block if they attack with this because I have this rush of vitality, which is kind of my combo with Fen Hauler. So I'm holding up this thing, and I'm also holding up my Rush of Vitality. So they can't really attack me anymore. Okay. use Rush of Vitality here. And I gain lifelink, that's huge. I forgot about the lifelink part. Huge. Absolutely massive. My deck needs a lot of resources to win. Like, my Glimmer of Genius, I'm still, like, out of gas, kind of. So I'm, like, I'm glad I have this. What do they got?
Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Bring in Brawl, Rush of Vitality. I certainly want both of those. I just want good blockers. So they have those, a bunch of 3-3s. Three they have this thing, Dawn, Feather, Eagle. Hmm. I definitely like Fen Hauler and Gear Seekers here. Hmm. So these are all the cards I kind of want. I don't think Malfus Squad quite cuts it. Subtle Strike still seems good to me. Gosh. So hard to know what to cut. Maybe my like Pillar Bug Trophy Mage f module con synergy p package is too slow. Or maybe I just want the module. I just have a lot of good two drops and stuff. Hmm. On the draw, I'm not going to want that, I don't think. Module's the slowest part of that combo, too. Rush of Vitality. Eh? Rush of Vitality can single handedly win me the game if I put it on a Fen Hauler. That's like my combo I want. Maybe I don't want my three drops, my Trophy Mage, Percata Pillar Bug, Fen Hauler combos. Maybe I'd rather have the Pillar Bug than the Malfus Squad. Okay, looks like a good hand. Turn two, that was their draw step. Okay, they don't have a two drop. That's good to know. I'm gonna play the underhanded. Uh, I'm gonna get a poisoner out. If I draw a land, I can go underhanded designs and I can get a drain in, maybe. Draw whiff. Yikes. Well, this is going to be a, ch a challenge. We need to draw land this turn, I think. Hopefully. We can play Baral. He can make our stuff cheaper. That's big. Because then we can cast Glimmer next turn to find the lands we need. Ugh. Oh, that's not going to go well for me. Hmm. Yep, we're just going to pass. They're going to try and use this to kill my Aether Poisoner. I'm just going to play Underhanded Designs, actually. Because then if they crew this up, I can just kill it. I don't need the Glimmer right now. I had a couple of key lands. Do it, yes. That's pretty good. Pretty critical there.
so I can get an extra 1-1 one, one here. And I have this plus my Vitality or my Glimmer of Genius if they don't attack. Yep. Subtle strike, eh? Hmm. I think I want both of these. Oh no, what are they gonna do? Why didn't they kill Baral? Oh, they don't have a reason. So now we're holding up multiple combat tricks. Sure. You're kidding me. Oh my gosh. It's just brutal. Can't catch a break on this one. There we go. That's huge. Oh no. So this would do five to me and I can give my guy indestructible and gain two life, so that'll put me to eight. So even if they have plus three plus three, that'll and I'll go to one. Oh, that's huge. Oh, that's huge. I guess I could have held up Subtle Strike. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Some life gain. Perfect, double block, double block. So 
So we just have to survive one more turn because then we can make, make this a two powered lifelink creature to get out of range of their damage. Is there a trample combat trick at common? High Spire doesn't do it. Plus one plus three doesn't do it. Let's double lock like this. They could have inspired charge. That's okay for me, though. The one mana spells. This gives plus one, plus one, and minus one, minus one. I didn't want to use it just now, though. Sure. Oh, that's huge. Look at this. It's sick. No, I didn't get to cast it, you monster! Oh, I was gonna... Oh, make him sack their creature, get back my Ether Swooper, draw a card. Oh, the Bane. Oh, that was sweet, though. I'll see you folks in the final round. What a weird sideboard that we had to implement there. Welcome to the final round. I made two changes. I cut the two mo the two four drops for a Fen Hauler and a Brawl, and I think it's going to do good things for the deck. Because Fen Hauler has just been excellent. I knew it was good going into the set. Like, I knew it would be underrated, but it just does good things, and it's good in my deck. And I think Brawl did, like, did really well in the last game, and I think it's worth playing. I might also... Like, my side... The, the, the cool thing about sideboarding is you can really tweak your deck for the matchup, so I can, like really make the deck hum so like a blue deck maybe it would be best to do um, like more card draw like Tezzeret's ambition whereas that like the rush of vitalities were in were incredible in that other round we will take action to make a 1-1 one -one. we're fine with this trade Sure. Underhanded design is going to be good. So what we're doing here is we're letting them attack with their Thriving Rhino, spend the energy, and then we're going to kill it. Actually, we're probably going to kill it in a couple turns, because maybe they'll spend even more energy on it. But less likely, because we have this underhanded designs in play. They might want to force our hand on the underhanded designs. But yeah, so now they don't have extra energy sitting in the bank for if they have a Riparian Tiger or something. Are you heading out? Cool, we can talk later. No, I'll go get some, though. It's a bummer, isn't it? I'll go get some stuff at the store. Ooh, another thriving rhino. Boom, ba bum ba da ba da bum And now we have two removal spells for their two creatures. If necessary. And they can't hunt the weak, which is pretty important. So, they probably can't attack, and then we can demolition the big one, and start attacking with our Fen Holer. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's really bad for me. Oh, gosh, that's really bad.
Oh no, fabrication module is really good, but now we can at least hopefully kill whatever creature they make big, but it's not looking good for your hero. Oh no. Lose on their turn. This is not good for us though. We have drawn too many lands. We've drawn a lot of lands over the course of our drafts. The Prophetic Prisms do make us a little bit more likely to flood because they don't do a ton, but we do have a lot of good value plays here. I was worried about them having a blossoming something, so I was going to make them do this on their turn for sure. But I don't want them to get an extra counter so that they can hunt the weak. That would be really bad for me. Oh, it looks like they have hunt the weak. Oh, thank goodness, what a draw. Come on, be good to me, Glimmer. Don't want Brawl. Ooh. I feel like they've had Hunt the Week this whole game. I'm gonna get my own Fabrication module, but I actually have the mana to use it. Next turn I go Fabrication, Ether Super, then use Fabrication. If they don't have Hunt the Week... I mean, they have to have Hunt the Week. Yeah. At least they can't attack. I'll just chump this every turn with my 1-1. One, one. Hit them in the air. That's why you chump the rhino. <sighs> this can block the tiger. I can chump the rhino again. I'm afraid of plus three plus three make two energy. Okay. 
Are they dead on board? That attack puts them dead on board. So I go to three, they have three blockers. I attack for all my creatures, they block there, they block there, they block there. Hmm, maybe they're, maybe they're not dead. No, I have three of servos. They have three blockers. They can block one, two, three, and they take three and go to one. Oh gosh. I have to block like that. And they have to jump block now. That's good for me. Looks like it's going to be a slugfest. Man, I knew they had that hunt the week for a while. There's no combat trick that gives trample. I don't think. Green has plus three, plus three, plus one, plus three. I guess if there is a trample trick, we'll find out. my mind there isn't. Oh my gosh, what a drop. Okay, we're just gonna take no chances. Have to pay one extra energy because they have this thing. Okay, so... <sighs> they have the rhinos, they have this thing, they have a turtle, they have Skyship Plunderer. Hmm. How good is Rush gonna be? Could be pretty good. Do I want another Tezzeret's Ambition? No. Don't think I need Windkin Raiders. I'm not going to be winning, able to race them. I guess it does block Voyager and Swooper and Plunderer, so maybe Ra Raiders is okay. You know what else blocks all of those cards? Glint Nest Crane. Hmm. Anything seem bad? Pillar Bug does not seem necessary. I'd rather have a Ambition. I think, or maybe even just a Rush of Vitality. Hmm. Let's try it like that. Because Rush of Fatality is also good against Hunt the Weak. Okay, looks good. We don't have any blue mana, but we have a lot of the things we need to succeed. We have a Poisoner with Rush. That's a good combo. Keeps our Poisoner around. Baral can do good things as well if we do draw an island. Do they have Rhino? I mean, Turtle, I mean. Yikes. First try. <laughs> We're just going to have to hope to draw some of our late game cards here. I don't think they're going to attack. Oh, they are. They're going to town with their Thriving Turtle. My Poisoners are going to be really good in this matchup. Like, Turtle does not like to see a Poisoner on the other side. I'm gonna do this now. That way this thing can just draw a card immediately. And I can have Rush to protect it. Maybe I'm supposed to make them spend another energy. Buffing it up. Uh... 
I don't think I care if they don't put the energy into it. I just want block. It's one damage. And I'm more worried about a thriving rhino. Wow, but we're all going to be so good here. It can block turtle. It can block sage. Contraband kingpin is also going to be pretty good, I'd say. I like Rush here. Rush was a good sideboard choice. When you're always happy to draw the card, you can tell it was a good sideboard choice. And I'm pretty much always happy to draw this one. Just a massive blowout. They spent their entire turn on that. Holy heck. And we'll get a couple of scries when we play this weapon craft enthusiast. My gosh. That was such a sap. That was part of the reason I brought it in because it's so good against Hunt the Week. Oh my gosh. Just destroyed. My god. Just brutalized him. No, they have another one. Dang it. Yep, keep that. They have a trick. That was mostly just to gain a life. Oh, they don't have a trick, they're just blocking, so I don't deal damage to them, duh. Okay, my hand's on the table, buddy. This is the final round, Cryptotaku, and it looks like things are going all right. We're currently up a game. I kind of want an extra card draw spell as well, because I feel like we always are in this spot with our deck. Yeah, 3-6 is worth trading my 1-1 one, one death touch for. Yeah, because the Rhino's not even a big problem anymore, because it's just a 3-4. We are just not drawing what we need to draw. Brutal. Wow. What's it like? What is it like, opponent? Tell me. We're playing our lands, if, in case you're wondering, because we have um, a bunch of card draw stuff in our deck. Okay, we're both in top deck mode, but they have a module, so there's no way we win. It's really a bummer, because we have drawn one, two, three, four. We've only drawn seven spells this game. Oh, man. But that's why you play best of three, because then you can win game three, even if things didn't go your way in the first couple games. Yep.
I will take this opportunity. If they have something, they have something, but I have to dub quad block here. It's too good not to. Yeah, trading a thriving rhino for that is huge for me. Big draw strike. Come on, Glimmer of Genius. Ah! I can't buy a card! Jeez Louise. Ugh. My Wonder Barber double blocking is because of the fabrication module. They can put a counter on it. So, yeah, I'm just dead. I'm just going to concede. I can't block their stuff. Okay. That was unfortunate. So, good not to overreact. I don't think Weaponcraft Enthusiast does much in this matchup. It's more about big things and then little things. They have two Hunt the Weeks. Two Thriving Turtles. Rush of Vitality did good work that game, but it might not be something that I can get them with this time. But I still think it might be worth playing because it's so good with Fen Haulers. Hmm. Hmm. I really want to get in another Tezzeret's Ambition. I've kind of wanted to the entire time. Because I have so many early defensive tools that I can really use the card draw. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to run it back. Like that. We're on the play. We have a good chance, I think. Let's go. We're going to start with the Poisoner. Because then we can play Kingpin and get an extra Scry. A tune with Ether, yep. Oh, that is going to be good for us. Oh yeah, now we're not going to do the Poisoner because Trophy Mage is getting our Fabrication Module. And we are going to go to town. Oh, yeah. Early fabrication module. Sign me up. And the scrying from this guy. This is going to be a very different game from the last one. And we have that extra card draw in our deck. And we've gotten past the early game. I don't want to land. Basically, um, what we're going to do is they're going to make their guy a 3-4 or whatever. They might even hunt the weak. If they make it a 4-5, we're in a bit of trouble. So hopefully they don't have hunt the weak or they don't want to use hunt the weak.
If they do, though, it's a little bit tricky. Whew, close one. Making it a 4-4. Four, four. Perfect, okay. Buff up this guy. We have our Death Toucher to block it. We have a Tezzeret's Ambition coming next turn. Ice over, okay. But we still get all the scries, so that's good. Thread out before we draw our cards. Sure. The cool thing is, any of our cards can be a threat thanks to this module. I'm glad we have this card draw. This is the final game of the final round. I think this is going to be better. It just forces them to play a removal spell every turn. Maybe we should be buffing up the trophy mage. But this thing has menace, so we can attack with it. Sure. cards. Oh, yeah. We're going to do this. We don't need to make as much energy with that. Oh, yeah. Card draw into card draw. The classic. Oh, we get to scry first. Perfect. Perfect. Hmm, it's probably fine. I don't really want it, though. If Whenever I attack with this, I get a counter on it. Dang, I didn't even consider that. Next turn, I can kill one of their creatures and then attack with this, put another counter on it. I'm just gonna... Hmm, I wanna be able to activate this, but I really wanna get this into play as well. And I like having this around for, depending on whatever they put our, their energy on, too. This thing can kill one of their actual creatures. I think this is worth it. I have plenty of card draw. And they aren't they're gonna want to double block this. 
If I can kill their Pima Outrider. Then they won't have a creature any play. Yeah, misplays are a part of it. You get better over time, Malakune. Sorry to hear that it didn't go as well as you would have hoped, though. That's actually a really good trade for me. I I forgot that I was going to get a counter on it when I attacked, so maybe I could have attacked the previous turn. But they would have still been able to block, double block. And I would have lost him. I really want to draw the Tezzeret's card. I mean, the 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 Bolas Intimations card or whatever, the one that I like put first picked. I would love to cast that once. Like, can you imagine how spicy it would be? Pretty spicy. Getting rid of their, all their creatures. They can crew the battle barge for this turn, but then I can still attack with my Fen Hauler. Can't be blocked by artifact creatures, buddy. Wow, what? Okay. Okay, so we have massive threats in our hand. We're going to be able to deploy two of them next turn. And then one of them the other turn. Okay. We are in m very good shape here. I have exactly enough mana to make this Fen Hauler work. Eventually I can just start attacking with an unblockable Gear Seeker. Yeah, it is J Lil. Man, both these Tezzer's ambitions have been good. I would love to draw my card that makes him sack a creature. It would be so good for me. Make him discard, sack a creature. Oh, that was a good draw for them. Big draw for them, in fact. So they can put a counter on it. I don't want to get lose my gear seeker over it. So they pay four, put a count, gain an energy, put a counter on this. So it's a six seven. That's really good for me. Let's go. Just start destroying their only relevant creature every turn. Whew. 
Whew. I want to draw Tazareth's ambition. No, they're going to concede. No. <laughs> oh, I built this sick deck solely with the purpose of casting this card, and I never drew it. <laughs> I drew it once, but my opponent didn't let me cast it because they conceded before. <laughs> oh, the shame. Never have I been so unhappy to get the 3-0. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Well, if you were watching this draft on YouTube and you made it all the way till the end of the video, I really do hope you enjoyed it. I know I certainly had fun. The games were very interesting. Fabrication module once again showing how important and powerful it is. But yeah, remember to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment in the comment section down below with any questions or feedback. Leave hashtag no intimations because we have no idea what this card does, I guess, because we never drew the card. Uh, hashtag, dark, hashtag no intimations. Uh, but it was a sweet deck, and I'm glad that we first picked it because it led to this masterpiece. Fen Hauler, massive overperformer. I knew it was going to be good in this set uh, because it was good last time, even though it didn't look as good, but it really overperformed. Out of the sideboard, Rush of Vitality did some really big things for us. The Tezzeret's Ambition in that final game, having both of those was really key. Um, and like all of our cards really performed well. Malfus Squad, one that I ended up cutting, but it probably could have done some good stuff. I just never ended up really drawing it or playing it. Contraband Kingpin, all of our cards are good stuff. Underhanded Designs, really good for taking out those vehicles. Siphoner was excellent. I'm really glad I had that one. Brawl, I'm glad I had in the main deck by the end. This card did some good th things for us. Um, really just a really sweet deck overall. I think Fabrication Module is fantastic. Really carried us a lot of the time there. But yeah, that is going to do it for this draft video. If you want to find more of my content, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. You can read my articles linked in the description and pinned comment down below. You can also support me directly via the Patreon, patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Um, though, even just you watching the video, hitting that like button, and uh, being a part of our community is appreciated and uh, a great way to give back to the channel. Um, you can also join the free Nikolai Polos community Discord server, linked in the description and pinned comment as well. It's free to join. We talk about all things magic and sometimes organize community games and that sort of thing. But yeah, that is going to do it for this draft video. I really do hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you next time.